Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we are finishing off this work week on a Friday with a little NBA slate here, a decent amount of games. We've got best bets in this one for you. We also have play up props up in another video. So like here and subscribe to that page so you can continue to follow along each and every weekday with us. Also want you to head to the lines.com. Check out everything that we have up on the site right now and use that odds finder tool to make sure you're getting the best juice available to you from all of these bets that you are making in the NBA this season. Nate, let's go ahead and get into your first NBA best bet. Not necessarily a, a a fun, well, it'll be a fun game. I don't know how good of a game it'll be, but we got the Pellies and the Hornets. Yeah, I mean, I, I like watching the Pelicans. <clears throat> they're yeah. they're a bit of a force right now uh, as they come off the IST embarrassment, if you will. Um, and I'll just, you know, I was looking at them to cover seven. I mean, it was six, six and a half at the open. That was pretty good. Maybe them to score 120, but I mean, this is kind of an easy hack is just Ingram 25 plus in the win, which is plus 150 um, versus the money line minus 285 on its own. And Ingram's core prop is 23 and a half. So, I mean, we're not really going out on too much of a limb here. It's kind of kind of dependent on if Zion plays, uh, but I mean, maybe it's not. I mean, if Zion plays, like he's probably going to be loafing against an Eastern Conference team that he probably doesn't have to respect. Um, I mean, whether he plays or not, the looks like the Hornets are going to be without Mark Williams and PJ Washington, along with LaMelo, which is why you like the Pels to win. And I mean, yeah, I, Zion, he came out and, and, and silenced the doubters, if you will, silenced all the criticism with that huge game against the Wolves. Now he's just kind of out with the ankle. Even if he plays, I just don't know how hard he will play in this matchup. Ingram has thrived in this matchup. He had a 30 point triple double. Last time out, and it's a pretty similar matchup to what he just to the Wizards, where he just dropped forty. I mean, you take Mark Williams away from this Hornets team, and they are a bottom five defense easily in their last three without him. One twenty one defensive rating, um, <clears throat> you know, allowing fifty six paint points, allowing the second most points off turnovers. The Wizards, by the way, allow the most. Pelicans had twenty seven points off turnovers last game. The Hornets gave up thirty two points off turnovers in their last game. Uh, the Hornets have lost all three. To Western Conference teams this season, 125 defensive rating, absolutely pounded in the paint by the Wolves at home. Their only home game against the West team gave up 77 to that Wolves triumvirate, Rudy Cat and Naz. Uh, and that was with Mark Williams and PJ Washington playing and no Ann Edwards. So it was just like, I like, I love the Pelicans, their ability to just score at will in the paint against this team. Um, I mean, they're scoring 131 since this ISD embarrassment. So the 120 is definitely in play. But I just like Ingram to kind of lead the charge. Um, I mean, he's a he's a road home guy. I'll talk you know in player props a bit more about this. I mean, thirty one percent usage on the road and twenty five and a half a game versus twenty two at home. Uh, it was the same thing last season, basically too. So uh, give me Ingram to to keep the scoring going and the Pels to win. Totally. Um, it's just it, Ingram is is the constant, I think, in this game. And I'm starting to to realize I think the Pelicans are going to just pwn them in this game. That that defense and the ranginess of it is going to be a problem for everybody. They're going to have they're going to be able to put Herb Jones on Rozier. Like Gordo's probably not in for another good game. This is not the position on the court where you're able to score against this team is is coming from the wing. Um, yeah, poor Nick Richards. We picked on him last game, uh, and that worked out. And and he's going to be in for it again, man. So yeah, this is this is a, a, another situation where I'm like, is minus seven and a half too much for the Pels on the road? Not really, right? I'm starting to uh, to feel a lot better about that as well. But yeah, the the Ingram 25 with or without Zion. Now if Zion's in there. He should, if he wanted to, he could just get play taps at the rim every time if he wanted to. I don't know if he wants to, like you said. So I do know Ingram, whether he, whether uh, Zion is in there or not, is going to be able to score from the mid-range and probably cutting to the basket from where he's at. So yeah, he's he's a great bet in this one, and so is uh, the, the Pellies as well. So uh, I'm going to go with a Phoenix team total here. I like it a lot, and I want to be able to talk about this Knicks game a, a little bit, and I'll talk about it a bit more in player props because I feel more confident about that because Mitchell Robinson's not in. So that's a huge reason for this over 118.5 for, for the Suns. Uh, they, they are playing at home. We know that they'll have Booker and, and KD. Probably Beal. He has props up, but you, know, you never know. Like Beal could just be a scratch at, at any point. But m- more importantly, with those two on the floor – 
like I kind of know what I'm getting and the fact that KD especially and even Booker is going to be able are going to be able both to be able to get to the rim a lot more easily than they were no offense Isaiah Hardenstein uh he has a decent on off uh, uh defensive rating he's also going up against backup centers on all of these, not against Yusuf Nurkic, if that's where they want to play him, right? So that's going to be a bigger problem for him. He's going to be neutralized a ton. Uh, and so, I, yeah, the the other thing that you pointed out, because you wrote a great article up on the lines.com, is the Bet MGM special for KD to get 28 plus points and for Phoenix to win this game. And the Knicks have played a lot as of late, uh, and they are on this road trip now. They had an easy one against uh, a Utah team that was missing a bunch of people and Julius Randle took full advantage of that. I like a game, uh, a pretty big game from him as well, which is partly why, you know, you said the the Knicks do come along for some of these games where they, when they tend to give up points, they do score points a lot as well. And, and they're happy to keep the pace fast at those times when Tibbs has to just go like, all right, I don't got the weapons to play Tibbs ball, even though I'm pretty sure he signed Taj Gibson. I don't know what to make of that, but I, I don't know if we'll see Taj in there. Even if we do, I'm not too worried about it, to be honest with you. Um, he's more of a bench coach at this point, in my opinion. But yeah, I think the, uh, the special, there for for KD with the money line is also like where I, where I'd lean, um, but the team total at one eighteen and a half. I do think they're good for one twenty in this game. They've been putting that up when they do have the duo of KD and Booker at home. Uh, if you look at those splits right there for those two in the last four games that they played at home, uh, this team is averaging one twenty eight and a half. So there were some cupcakes in there, but yeah, I think this is a good opportunity for Phoenix to score, and I do think Julius Randle will be the, the the leader in keeping them uh, in keeping them in this game. Yeah, right. Julius, bigger load on offense, but without Mitchell Robinson, really a top five defender in the league, uh, you replace him with Jericho Sims, who's kind of like just a turnstile is, is he not in, in pick and roll. If you force him to go out there and deal with KD and Book on the perimeter, like that's not going to go well. Uh, yeah, don't mind the over for the game with, with Brunson and Randall coming right back. Tend to be more high scoring with Western Conference teams on the road, do the Knicks. Uh, but yeah, I'll take some KD props. He plays really well against the Knicks, usually at the Garden, doesn't he? He's never lost to the Knicks at the Garden, or is it just period? I, I think it's one of those two. Uh, okay, yeah, I haven't just, seen that. He plays very well against the Knicks. Uh, classic game, again, uh, classic NBA situation here where the, the bet will hinge on one man status, Desmond Bain, under the weather on Wednesday, and the Grizzlies lost in Houston. Um, I mean, whether or not he plays, I think I'm fine with over 213. It was 211 when I started researching this, and I think that was that's just way too low with Houston going on the road here. Their defense is absolutely dominant at home, a little less so on the road, where it's a 118 defensive rating versus 100 at home. I mean, this game got to 221 in Houston without Bain, with both teams shooting 30% from three. And how to get there? Both teams also got to the line 35 times, uh, just like a physical, you know, bunch of scrappers rebounding second chance points, getting points while the clock is stopped. Uh, I mean, the Grizz have kind of sped it up a little bit lately, maybe, you know, anticipating Ja landing at some point, like trying to get the offense sparked. But I mean, Bain was a huge part of that. His first three in December, 35 a game on 60, 55 splits. Only cold game against Minnesota. Then he got right back at it with 28 versus Dallas. He, you know, um, and, the, and the last two versus Dallas and Minnesota did go over in terms of Grizz home games. I don't expect them to win. So, I mean, this is where if you want to bet it now, you can probably just take Rockets minus three and a half. They snapped that road, that road skid that they were on to start the season. The Grizz are still only one in 10 at home with only a win over the Jazz JV team. Most importantly, Unlike most Memphis teams, when they have Steven Adams and company, they're bottom eight in, in opponents' second chance points, points off turnovers. Houston is is killing people in those regards. That's how they have to score. Uh, I will say, you know, Houston's defense, while it is elite against the three and an elite rebounding team, they don't give up second chance points or points off turnovers. They do allow the seventh most free throws. So, I mean, it makes me lean more Houston um, obviously because, because they're just more dependable because Ime has everybody playing on a tight ship and bought in and, uh, but it does make me still think that we can get over here. I mean, if, if with a two t 11 total where it opened, it's like both teams, one team has to go under a hundred for that to stay under. And I just think Memphis, the way they're starting to play a little better at home, uh, we'll, we'll get over a hundred and, and Houston will be right there. It's just so dependent on Bain, isn't it? I mean, to me, it's just like you said, if Bain's in, 
I'm, I'm totally fine with the points. If Bain's in, I imagine it's like 25 and a half for him. That's usually where his prop has been as of late because he's consistently going over 25. I mean, look, this, this Houston backcourt, at least Dylan Brooks, you know, will be on him. So it's another battle between those two. Still fine for, for Bain in, in the past, like, like you've mentioned. Uh, my thing with this game, and I'll just go right into my bet to talk about it, is Alperin Shangun under four and a half assists. And I think the 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 points, like you said, they they could be there. They might come from him. He's had a couple of spike games against them, but not in this against this iteration of the Grizzlies, which I'm not claiming by any means to be better than the one with Stephen Adams. But they didn't have Stephen Adams the last time that that he played last season, um, and that's when he did have that that spike game of 25 point or 23 points and just one assist as well. So I think the under four and a half assists for him, I was like, I kept scaling it back. I was like, okay, points, rebounds, and assists, 32 and a half. Let me go under there. And I was like, he could legit score 25 randomly. I, like, not even that randomly. Like, he if he gets fouled as much as he has been, that's then then there he is. But, like, Bismack has been able to handle him in the post. And, and that's how he's getting defended is Bismack's waiting for him in the post. But when he's out on the three-point line, he's basically getting doubled by either a guard or uh, uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. coming over around the foul line and keeping him from getting that... I, that was a fun game. I was texting some homies like, yo, I don't know if you guys are watching Grizzlies Rockets, but this is enjoyable, to be honest. Um, even though there was a lot of fouls, it was like there was there was a lot of like care. Uh, and so that's what you keep getting is th- clearly like they pinpointed that that uh, Sangoon is the, the thing that makes this this engine run, whether he's running the pick and roll with FVV or he's actually getting the ball expected to like make something happen from the three point line or the extended foul line like that's he's the engine. And so he's been the focal point. The rebounds are there for him and the points could be there for him if he does get that like the the mid range going as well, because that is where, like before the double comes to him, he does have a moment to shoot like a 15 to 17 footer. Uh, that was the consistent like pattern for him in that last game. And the, honestly, the game before at this point, but the potential assists stay very low for him just at six and a half Memphis limits uh, the opposing centers in a lot of ways, bottom five, their top five and limiting them points, rebounds and assists uh, and assists are fourth least that they, that they allow to the opposing center, partly because of what I said, the fouls for Shangun have always been a problem. Not the best defender, although he's sort of like upgraded to like slightly below average this year as opposed to just complete turnstile. So, you know, he's he's still getting fouls, though. Like you said, both these teams are. uh, And that's going to continue to be a problem for him. Averaging four and a half personal fouls in his last four versus this team. That's the reason he's only been able to average 27 minutes. Um, with the amount of rebound chances that he's getting, though, because of the bricks that Memphis is going to continue to put up, like I, I would be, I would be scared even of ten and a half. Although you get pretty good juice for over ten and a half, it's still plus money. It's it's not something that he does that consistently. It's just this is a matchup where there are a lot of rebounds available. I, I'm not, I don't want to go that route. I just want to go to the assists. I kept, I went from rebounds to assists back to just assists. Like this is the one I feel best about. Um, but I do still think it's going to be slow and choppy. It's just there will be certain guys that are able to score and and his his ability to like pass out of that double team doesn't really open up too many guys. So I, I'm I'm going with the under four and a half. Yeah, I like the look because of what I talked about, just the insane foul rate we saw in the last game, right? You're not getting an assist if if everything is going to be earned at the free throw line. Memphis is desperate, back home, needs wins, uh, going to be playing physical defense and not letting people just get layups. Like, you're not just going to get a nice backdoor cut assist for Shangoon here. Uh, yeah, so it should be kind of choppy, like you said. Yeah, grind city, baby. About to be, take it back to Tony Allen days. But that is all the time that we have for you in this one. Continue to follow along. Check out the play of props. Wicked hot there as well. Three and one on the night last night. Continue to build that those units up. Where are we at now? I just want to make sure I can tell you. We were we were up about 17. 17 units on the season with those play of props. So definitely subscribe. Continue to check us out. And until we see you next, happy betting. Stop.